Okay, welcome everyone to our Tech Talk series. We're really excited today to deliver consistent standardized environments with application and database custom images delivered by our cloud automation tools. And our experts today are Eddie Embler and Leo Alvarado. So take it away, guys. Thank you for that great introduction, Tammy. As you mentioned, today we'll be looking and discussing about how to deliver a consistent standardized environment, leveraging application and database custom images delivered by cloud automation tools, right? So all the tools you need to make it very easy to meet your organization's needs to meet security standards and a consistent user experience. Today's learning objectives will be covering creating custom app image, creating custom database images, also learning how to capture gold environments. So not just an, an individual element, but capturing the entire stack, the, the database, the compute, the network required to be able to deploy an entire stack with automation leveraging Terraform. So as we talked about, this agenda view gives you a little bit deeper view. So we'll first start with a discussion around, you know, the available database services in OCI, um, discuss the value of using custom application images and custom database images. We'll also discuss, you know, how to capture the, the gold environment image using, you know, um, the OCI resource manager in Terraform. That way you're familiar with some of the tools that are available for you in your cloud environment. We'll demo creating custom app and DB images from the OCI console. So first we'll have a discussion and then we'll actually go uh, look at it in real time. Um, and we'll we'll also demo how to create the stack using the resource manager. Um, so at the end of that, we'll open it up to Q&A. Um, so let's have some fun. So Oracle offers a range of database services in the Oracle Cloud, right? The Oracle Cloud database subscriptions range across the spectrum with service additions and automation levels to meet your SLAs. Our base database service offers both Oracle database standard and enterprise edition models, which allows you to select from single instance or two node rack enterprise databases with this service. When you need a little more scale or performance, you can choose from our Exadata database service, which is available in the public cloud or on cloud at customer. And for those who want fully managed experience, you can choose from one of the autonomous database offerings. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure uses images to launch instances, right? You specify images when you create an instance. So when you have a virtual machine with an image that you're happy with and you wanna create a custom image of that existing instance, you'll be able to do that directly from the console or the API. So you can capture your custom image then you can use that image to provide consistent environments that use automation for deployment. And we'll, we'll give you a visual of this. This is what allows you to be able to capture your environment, you know, certify it, and then enable others in the organization to be able to quickly deploy new environments when required. Some of the use cases for, for using custom images are, again, like creating your your golden image that you will use to spin up in other environments, backing up the base OS image in case of a disaster, right? In case there is a hardware failure um, and you, you can quickly spin up a new VM with your image and voila, you're back in business. Um, and if there's data associated to it, you spin up your VM with your image and restore the data from the backup. You might be able want to also share your um, standards, not just within your tenancy, but across multiple tenancies or across regions. We'll talk about how we can use the um, automation functions and custom image export import and uh, our object storage to copy your images where they are required. So let's explore creating a custom application image from an existing VM using the OCI console. Okay, so you click on the navigation menu click on instances. Then in our case, underneath uh, our, in our compartment, we called my demo, I already have a, a, a gold image application server that I want to capture. It's called my app tier. So I click on that and that brings up the instance details page. So along the top, you could see that we, there, there are certain tabs, start, stop, reboot. So under more actions, we click on that and we are given the option to create a custom image. Again, this will allow us to record the software that's installed on this, the boot image, and be able to use that in the future. 
So how much information do we need to give? Just define the compartment where you want your image to be stored and give it a name. Cl click on the create custom image and that's it. Very simple. You've now created a custom image. You can use the console or API to also export the images, right? So here we created one. Now we're going to actually export it so that it can be used somewhere else. So again, from our, our menu in the OCI console, we go down to uh, custom images and you will see there um, that we can click on an existing custom image. So we already created it. It's on our list. Uh, my custom app image. Now we want to export it. So we click on that name. This brings up our custom image details page. So similar um, flow across the tabs there, you'll notice that we have um, an export tab. So we simply click on the export tab and um, give the URL um, definition for where we want our resource to go. Okay, so pretty straightforward. The, um, the exports and, and the imports, they are actually stored in object storage. You can um, point to a bucket um, for where you want it to go. But when you're going to import, right, again, this is bringing it back in, we would go under our navigation menu, click on custom images. Then we'll click on the import image button. This brings up the image, the import image page. Again, very simple. We um, give it a name. We, in this case, I wrote down my exported image. We are able to say where this image exists, right? You can see the two radial buttons there that say, you know, do I want to import this image from object storage or uh, a bucket? Or am I going to give you an object storage URL? Um, if you have the URL there, you would um, put the object storage URL in the in the box. I, I've listed the naming format, but the documentation is available in case you forget what that um, um, object storage URL needs to look like. But again, you're simply um, identifying the host name, the namespace, the bucket where the image is stored, and the name that you gave to your image. Now, for image type, you have a few choices, right? You can create a the, the first type, VMDK, which is a virtual machine disk file format. Um, this can be used uh, on any VM, this image. Um, or you can create an image for Q, QEMU. Um, or you can create the third option, which is an OCI type. This is great for if you've exported an image out of um, OCI, then you can import it right back into OCI. So very easy format to be able to move OCI images around to where you need them. And finally, you get the launch mode, right? You can choose to be power virtualized, emulated, or native. So you get a ton of options here. And again, so you basically gave it a name, told it where to find it, what type it was, how you wanted the launch, and you hit import image. And just like that, your image will be imported and available on your custom images dashboard. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about is you know the marketplace so sometimes you know you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel right many of our customers and the oracle teams have created some very useful images that are stored in the marketplace right these images cover everything that you can think of you can um, log in to the to the uh, menu go down to the uh, marketplace and you will see a list of applications launched for you on the left side, you'll see the filters that lets you pick the type of image that you're trying to apply, uh, lets you pick the publisher that might have done it, the category, um, whether it's a, a free or a BYOL um, um, image um, that, you can, that you can use, or it's a paid image. So you can filter down exactly what you need. And obviously, you can always, in the search bar, um, put in the name of the, uh, of the image. Uh, or category uh, so that your image comes. Looking at the list here, you can see you have all kinds of database images, MySQL, Oracle, application images like WebLogic, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, um, uh, images that are for GPU, uh, right? For security, for firewalls, for transaction processing. So as you go through the list, you can find an image that will help you to speed your development process. So you don't have to always start from a blank VM and build up. 
you can go get a marketplace image, um, install it on your instance, customize it the way you want it, and then go back to our first process, right? Which is to create a, a, your own gold image of, um, of an existing VM. So that's a great way to get a jump start on your environment, and then you can further customize it as required. Um, so we've been talking about the instances, so we're going to switch the topics just a little bit and talk about databases, right? So although even in the marketplace, you can find database images to use, those images are going on top of uh, of, a, of an instance, right? A VM instance that you would, would control and manage. But here, when you create a custom database image, um, you're actually able to use that image as part of the deployment when you are selecting um, some of the databases or service paths offerings that we have. So when we talk about our base database service and our Exadata database service, these are some of the images that you're gonna be able to do. And this comes in to be very useful when you have applications like PeopleSoft and SAP that might have packages of, of um, patches that need to be um, applied and need to be uh, consistent, right? So very simple. Again, you, you log into your um, your menu, you um, go down to um, your database software images, you click on that. Then um, you are able to click on create database software image, which will launch the software image page. And again, very simple inputs. You know, you know what compartment do you, is your um, image going to be stored in? Um, are you creating an image for a VM or an Exadata? Um, then, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about the database software image that you want to configure. What is the base version? Uh, you see we picked 19C on the diagram on the far right. Um, choose a patch set update, uh, a bundle patch. Um, are there one-offs that you need, right? Those are all options that you can build into your gold image. You're doing that one time, you're gonna standardize on it, and then you're gonna deploy it everywhere you want. Um, you know, but there's another useful item as we were talking about the more complex applications that might need bundles you know, of, of patches to be applied. You know, once you, it, maybe you have an SAP Oracle Home that you already want to emulate. Well, instead of having to manually put everything in and list out all the individual patches, you can actually upload your Oracle Home inventory and it will actually use that to build your uh, database software image. Um, under the advanced options, you can always add tags, right? One of the um, cool tags is I can say, hey, this, this database is an SAP um, profile. It's a PeopleSoft profile, it's a JD Edwards profile. That way, when wherever we're doing maintenance, we know what kind of services that we're impacting here. And simple as that, you click on create database software image and it's done. It now shows up as an available custom database image that you can use whenever you do create database. So with that being said, let's take just a brief moment to go into our console and see what this looks like. All right, so I have logged into the OCI console and I, you know, we talked about clicking on the menu, we'll click on compute. And in our case, we're dealing with uh, the instances. So we'll click on instances. So on the left rail, we have our compartment. We always wanna make sure that we've selected the compartment that is where we wanna work on. So that way we can apply the right access and permissions. So you see that, we have our gold image that we were looking at, the My App tier, and we have an image that we made out of the uh, marketplace named. So, um, you know, if I wanted to create a custom image, I would go to custom images. And this is simply, again, I could import an image. Again, this is the screen we were looking at. We would give our name, tell where, where it was, put in our URL, our type, and, click on import images and we would be done. So nothing very difficult there. Similarly, if we wanted to look at a, an existing custom image, right? Again, we would be in the menu, custom image. There's an existing one, click on it. This is the dashboard that we were showing in our graphic. Okay, here's the export tab. Click on export. 
we get our choice. Hey, where do you want to put this? You want to specify a bucket or do you want to specify a storage URL? So we could give our storage URL where this is going to be. This would give us our image format and export. Okay, as soon as we finish our export, our exported image would show up here on our dashboard. So whether you import the, um, the, the custom image or you create it from an existing custom image, they all end up, the custom images end up in this list. So that's pretty easy there. Uh, Eddie, yes, what, what, what's the difference on launching the marketplace database image versus using the custom image uh, available in OCR? I'm glad you asked. Um, well, so the major difference is, you know, the the marketplace images are going on your instance, right? So those are being deployed on the instance, and then you run and maintain that instance on your own. When you use database images, those database images are stored in Oracle's uh, managed object storage, and they also um, get the automation tools for being able to deploy, create, and manage. Right, so that is the difference. Is the 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 database um, images that we are going to uh, actually look at here just in in a moment? They actually um, operate that way. So thank you for that question. All right, thanks, Eddie. Well, I, I see a question in in Q and A. Like, how about creating the software image from OCI? Why upload when you can make in the cloud? Right now, we we our first scenario actually did this that so one of the things that we could do right is we can actually create the custom image which would be from an existing instance so that is doing it in the cloud the other the other thing is we can import an image that has been created in the cloud from any other location importing it in so yeah you're right or if you have one in your you know in your on-premise system that you want to bring up to the cloud you would bring it to object storage and then it would be available to you so Great question. So the, the the very last one we'll do here is um, you know for the Oracle database. Click on Oracle database. Underneath resources on the left side, right, we have database software images. So for database software images, we click on it, and you can see that any database software image that I've already created shows up, right. And I can use this when I do create database. Okay. Um, if I wanted to create a brand new image, no big deal. I click on the link. The create DB software image comes up. Again, it says, what compartment? What are you creating the image for? What version do I want to use for, for my image? And then, you know, I can go through the, the process of actually creating the version that I want. And uh, for example, I click 19C. Uh, if I wanted a 1914, so maybe my organization isn't ready to go to 1916, right? I want to standardize on 1914. I could do that. And again, the same, uh, if there are one-off patches, I could enter them here. Um, but if I wanted to just build it from an existing Oracle inventory, I could upload that over inventory there, click on create software image, and it would go, go uh, and be available. Um, just real quick, like, if I take you to the uh, database system, for example, we click on uh, taking you from the beginning, Oracle database, and I say base database system, right? And I now I say create DB system. Right, I can give it a name, walk through and say it's gonna be for VM, the shape that it's gonna use, configure the system. I can add my SSH keys, and on the next page, it will actually ask, uh, allow me to be able to show you the, um, to select the custom image. So let me get my SSH keys really quick. So we tell it the network, we're gonna be in my demo VCN, database is gonna be on a private network. I'm gonna tell you it's uh, my host for the prefix. Here, I'm able to change the database image, as you can see, right? After I gave it a database name, this is what I wanted to show you, is that now I have a choice of using the standard database images or a custom database image. So on our custom database image, 
Um, we anything that is available to us in our compartment, we will be able to um, select from this from this here and use it. So that's how your custom images are for the database are able to be used. All right. With that being said, Leo, I'm going to bring the 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 um, presentation over to you. Um, and we'll return back to our session. Thanks, Eddie. So now, now that we have uh, created our gold standards for, for application tier and, and database tier, so now let's see how we can bring in automation and standardize uh, the infrastructure and easily replicate uh, environments. So let's let's start. So on your OCI console, so go to developer services and click on uh, resource manager. So let me pause here. So did you know that in, in OCI, you have a, a free tool it's called OCI resource manager, which is a, a fully managed Terraform as a service that you can use and it, it will allow you to use it as an infrastructure, as a code to automate uh, the provisioning across all your OCI resources. So your OCI resource manager, so it, it comes with a complete CLI, SDK, and, and console support, and it has a JIP integration with uh, OCI platform. So your resource manager, as you can see here, so it, it, it also integrates with your identity and access management for you to define a more granular permission for your Terraform uh, operations. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a, a stack. A stack represents a, a set of uh, a set of OCI resources that you will be creating on your on your tenancy. So you can you can create a stack out of a an existing uh terraform config or you can create it or import it from an existing uh compartment using the discovery the resource discovery so here you can choose uh, either to include all the services so when when you choose all so it it will discover all the existing services uh that exist on your compartment, or you can select uh, several services. Like for this demo, we're choosing the core and the database. So the, the core, it, it, it will discover your application tier, your network tier, which is all your virtual cloud network components. For the database services, this one will discover all the database cloud services running on your compartment. So this is, let's say if you're running a base database service or an Exadata database service, all of these uh, resources will be discovered and you will get a generated baseline Terraform config uh, from this uh, compartment. So just give it a name. So for this demo, we'll name it as our uh, MyStack uh, discovery. So, and then click on uh, next and click on create. So once you uh, create the, the stack, which using the resource discovery to discover the resources on your compartment, you can just simply download it. So you can see here the, the download uh, Terraform configuration and that you can save it in your local file and do the editing for adding the standardization for your uh, <clears throat> Terraform config. So now in, in the discovered uh, Terraform config, so you can see here our application tier. You can even see here the custom image that's been created by, by Eddie a while ago. And then for the database, you'll, you'll see all the, the database cloud services. So again, if, if you have an existing base DB, uh, or Exadata database uh, service, autonomous, so everything will be discovered on this uh, baseline Terraform config. So now we just tried to show you how you can make use of those 
uh, gold standards that you have defined uh, a while ago. So let's say you want to create the instance out of the custom instance image that you have created. So there's an argument here which pertains to the source details of your image or your instance image or your application tier. So meaning when you run the Terraform, the application tier will be created using the uh, custom image that uh, you have created. So you can define a variable and you just simply uh, put the OC ID of that custom image. And then when it runs the Terraform, your instance or the compute, it will be created using the custom image that you have uh, created a while ago. Then for the variables, again, as I mentioned, so you can you can define variables to to standardize your deployments in, in your OCI. Like you can create and define variables for your application tier. So as you can see uh, here, oops, let me go back. Okay, now we go for uh, the, the database. So for the database, this is just to, to show you the different resources that you will be creating. So for our demo, uh, we will be creating an Exadata database service. So here you can see the resource for infrastructure, for VM cluster, for database home, for database, and the pluggable databases. So what are we trying to show here is if you want to apply your, your gold standard. So let's say you want to create a database out of a gold standard from a custom DB image. So a while ago, Eddie shown you how to create a custom database software image. So now if you wanted to call that custom DB software image on our automation, so you can see in the resource for the database home, there's an argument here, which is referring to a software image ID. So you, you, you can see here that you can call out a specific custom software image ID that you have created at OCI. So you just need to specify the OCI ID of that uh, software image, or you can define an, a variable to to call that uh, software image uh, ID. So after you've done with the editing, so you can enhance further by calling out some variables like for your database tier, you can even uh, call uh, variables for the creation of your Exadata infrastructure, for the creation of your Exadata VM cluster, and also for the creation of your database home, database, and uh, pluggable databases, which it, it will be very easy for the users to standardize the naming also of your uh, environment. So you can define different variables out of the supported arguments per resource. Like on your database, you can define a variable for your database name, unique name, the type of workload, the uh, the admin password or for the database home, the DB version, the display name. <clears throat> and then for the VM cluster, you can even specify the number of OCPU count, uh, also the the type of uh, licenses to be, I mean, the type of license, whether it's license included or bring your own uh, license. So now that we have done editing our Terraform, config and, and use our gold standards images from our custom application tier and custom database software image. So now let's try to create our stack to deploy our full stack application and database tier. So from the edited Terraform config, you just need to wrap it into a, a zip file. And then when you're about to deploy, so same procedure. So you need to go through on, on your OCI console. So you can go to the developer services, uh, go to resource manager, click on, on stack. So this time when we click the create stack, we need to choose the my configuration and choose the zip file, which is our my stack, that zip, which is the one that we have uh, edited a while ago. So give it a name. So this will be our full stack for both our application tier and uh, 
DB tier. Okay, and then after you you choose the compartment to which it will be created, click on next. So here you can see all the variables that we have defined. So you need to, if you want to create out of an a software image, you just need to paste the OCID. And here you can uh, <clears throat> specify some of the uh, arguments value and click uh, click on next for you to proceed on creating the, the stack. And once you have created the, the stack, let me pause here a bit. So, so after you have created the, the stack, so you can now uh, perform possible actions such as the, the plan, uh, apply, or, or even the import uh, state. So once you've created a staff successfully, so you can run a, a, a job to create or deploy the resources on, on your tenancy. So a, a, a job is defined as a Terraform action that, that runs on your Terraform configuration. So you can run the Terraform plan to review the infrastructure. So this will give you an execution plan. So it will show you all the resources that will be created onto your uh, existing tenancy. And then you can use the Terraform apply. And this one will be the actual provisioning or the actual deployments of the resources defined in your uh, config file. That, that 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 ends the the demo on how you can bring in together automation and your gold standards on deploying gold image uh, on your tenancy. Okay. All right, um, Leo. Thank you for that. I think um, the 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 next thing is going to be opening the floor to to Q and A. Mm -hmm. So let me share my screen and kind of um, see how we're looking on Q and A. Yep. Also, just just a note for the deploying the golden image. So just 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 make sure that you have the required permissions and uh, limits for you to run the Terraform script so that you won't be hitting any any error. Okay. Oh, that that's that's awesome. Thank you for that. All right, um, you know, we've kind of, you know, the questions were uh, around uh, the difference in plan and apply. You know, what if there are conflicts in the plan that's auto-generated? Is it going to overwrite the, um, the, the resources that we had there? Or, you know, what will happen at that point if there are conflicts? Well, right. And what's the difference between plan and apply when they're coming? Okay. For 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 the plan, it will just give you the the execution plan. So it's it's not really applying already or creating the deployment. So in, in the when when you perform the the plan job, so it 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 will show you if there are any conflicts within your, your Terraform config. So you will already catch the uh conflicts when when you run the the plan so it's a best practice that before you after you create the stack you first perform a plan action and then if everything is okay then that's the time you run your uh apply job all right um i don't see any other questions at the moment um actually let me make sure there's one more here it says, what is the life cycle of the Terraform stack once it's deployed? Do we care about the configuration drift or it's just not useful anymore? Okay, so for, for that one, uh, in, in the resource manager, there's also an, uh, an option for you to run uh, drift detection. So, so this, this, this will help for you to to compare your existing Terraform config out of what is available before. Okay. So there, there was another one um, which Tammy was uh, answered, but we'll, we'll read out here. It says, we currently can't create a DB and patch it in one command through the API. 
Uh, and the answer that was provided is use the custom software images to create the DB home to patch to the patch level that you want, All right? Um, hopefully we, we answered the question there sufficiently. If not, um, just uh, post your follow-on questions and we'll, we can dig in more. Um, all right. So, you know, folks were asking, you know, um, there, you know, it's frustrating to have to do it in two steps. Um, you know, we agree. Um, two steps can be frustrating. Please try to look at custom software images, right? Um, you can see that we can take a lot of the steps of patching and combine them into one, do it once in an environment, validate it in that environment, and then take that to many, right? And even more importantly, what uh, Leo was showing is the power of automation. Right, you script it once and you deploy it many times. You use the variables to change the the simple things like the names, right? Um, maybe in, in in one environment you want a few more OCPUs, um, but even if you don't change it during the automation deployment function, in the Oracle Cloud, those are all variables that can be changed after um, deployment as well, right? So you launch with the exact uh, um, configuration of an, the old environment, and then you can. Uh, you know, increase your CPUs where required, increase your storage where required. Okay. Okay, what is the life cycle of the Terraform stack one? Okay, that's the one we are. So yeah, I think we've covered them all um, at this point. Okay, there's actually a couple more coming in. Say we have a stack deployed and say we have a stack deployed, should we lock it just so no reckless resources would run a destroy? Mm. So uh, there are different possible ways to do that. So you can also control it on your permissions on your IAM. Like you can you can limit those users that can, of course, if if someone runs a a a destroyed and it it will delete all the deployments, right? So, we we do have some ways on you can restrict it either via the the policies. Okay, very good. Um, is there a way to create a custom image using OCI CLI? basically off the console. The answer to that is yes. The, you can always use the APIs to um, execute the activities that we showed in the console. Um, so yes, there is an equivalent API to, for, to um, execute the create custom image. Um, when you go through the variables, they're going to be the same variables that you saw in the console, right? They're just uh, available to you through the API interface. Okay, the next one is, do you have a command reference? Um, yes, we will, we will, when we post this to, to, to YouTube, we will include the um, URL to the uh, reference uh, API. That way you can reference it. Um, so thank you for that. We'll make sure that we include that. Yep, we'll we'll also include the 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 Terraform uh, resource for you to create the custom image. So there's also one available. So we will we'll include it on our post recording of this uh, act talk. So that brings us to a very really good spot, right? Where where are the resources? Right? Where can I find available solutions for the Exadata Cloud for our base database service? So join the Slack workspace that we have, Exadata Database Service. You know, we have get started guides that, you know, help you to, you know, everything from the initial installation, configuration, advanced options. We have the how-to demos that um, for not just Exadata, but also the base database service that to help you um, get these tasks done. You know, we host technical conversations, we feature blogs, um, you know, and obviously you have oracle.com slash database, oracle.com slash sex data, where you can get help on, on the topics. Um, you know, you know, how can you join us in our Slack channel? Here's the, uh, the join link. 
It's got the URL. And again, we'll, we'll we'll have this published. Love to see you guys join us. Love to hear the, the topics that you want to hear about, because at the end of the day, we're here for you. So please let us know what it is you want to hear about. Um, you know, this, this slide here basically walks you through a very simple four-step process on how to join, right? You, we saw the link. You saw the link. Um, you log in your email account to Slack. Um, you 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 get the code for the two FA uh, validation, and that's it. You're welcome. You're joined. And ultimately, you know we've got Oracle Cloud World coming up um, October seventeenth through twentieth. We hope that uh, many of you would be able to attend and, and visit the, the sessions that we will be hosting. Um, so with that being said, I think we've uh, reached the end of this. You know, I'm Eddie Ambler, and? And I'm Leo Alvarado. We look forward to seeing you at the next uh, Oracle Cloud World. Thank you, everyone, and we're off. <laughs>